Hi, I'm Andrew Spaziano, and this is an Anchor TV news update. Our top story, the Middle East nation of Qatar is under fire from human rights groups who accuse the nation of using forced labor to construct the soccer venues for the 2022 World Cup. The human rights organization Amnesty International has accused the government of charging large recruitment fees to workers, withholding passports, and holding paychecks to many laborers. Qatar has been taking advantage of the many migrant workers who have flocked to the nation seeking employment on many of its projects for the World Cup. It's also accused FIFA, the organization behind the World Cup, for ignoring the alleged violations. In local news, Governor Gina Raimondo unveiled a new tourism slogan and logo earlier this week, prompting harsh criticism from many citizens. The slogan, which says, Cooler and Warmer, was designed by Milton Glaser, who designed the iconic I Love New York logo. The video released along with a new slogan and logo has also garnered harsh criticism as it has been covered that a portion of its footage includes images of Iceland in it. Despite the harsh backlash and criticism, along with parodies across social media, state officials say they are planning on moving forward with the new tourism promotion. A new career development center opened up in Roberts Hall on March 24th. The ribbon cutting ceremony represented the culmination of more than a year of work to give the CDC a new home, both literally and figuratively. The transition from the center's old home in Craigley Hall to its new space in Roberts Hall gives the office a more modern and central location on campus. The idea for the move began with the integration of the CDC in the Office of the Professional Studies and Continuing Education last year, with the intent to create a one-stop shop for business services available through the college. All the official opening of the new center, RIC President Nancy Cariolo explained, the college has been trying to bring together everyone who deals with business community and create one point of contact. On Thursday, March 31st and Friday, April 1st, Don Helquist, Rick's Dean of Education, will be featured in an evening of theatricality and dance with his husband, William Evans, founder of the New York-based Bill Evans Dance Company. Also performing that evening will be dancer-actor and Rick alumni, Alberto Dennis, a member of the New York-based Third Rail Projects. Dennis will present a multimedia burlesque performance. Concert time is 7.30 p.m. in Rick's Foreman Theater. Thank you, Aaron. Now for some insight on the country's political races, we'll turn it over to Anchor TV correspondent Robbie Rhodes. This week in U.S. politics, Donald Trump has yet again made another wave of headlines through his stance that women should face some sort of punishment for getting abortions if they are banned. These new controversial comments are just the most recent of Donald's headline-grabbing antics, as last week we saw Donald make comments aimed at Heidi Cruz, Ted Cruz's wife. After an anti-Trump ad funded by Cruz's campaign featured Trump's wife Ivanka, Trump then threatened to spill the beans on Heidi Cruz and proceeded to post a tweet insulting her appearance. Even after facing criticism for these remarks, Trump refuses to back down because quote unquote, Ted started it. On the Democratic side, a recent poll projected that Hillary Clinton is leading Bernie Sanders in a 54% to 42% lead. The two Democratic frontrunners are gearing up in full force for one of the most important primaries yet, New York. While Clinton is no stranger to New York, she currently lives there and is stationed in Brooklyn, Sanders has been gaining lots of support throughout the state, and Clinton is going all out with her publicity throughout the state to try and gain this very important win. Thank you, Robbie. Now for sports, we'll turn it over to correspondent David Cusack. The Boston Bruins dropped a close game on the road, losing 2-1 to to the New Jersey Devils. The lone goal for the Bruins was scored late in the second period by Brad Marchand. The goal was his 35th of the year. The Bees traveled to St. Louis to take on the Blues Friday night. The Boston Celtics dropped a game on the road, losing to the Los Angeles Clippers by a score of 114-90. Isaiah Thomas led the Celtics with 24 points, and Jared Sollinger contributed 9 points and 11 rebounds. The Celtics look to bounce back against the Portland Trail Blazers tonight. The NCAA Final Four field has been determined, and only a single one seed remains. The University of North Carolina continued their path to the Final Four with an 88-74 victory over sixth-seeded Notre Dame. Tenth-seeded Syracuse shocked number one seed Virginia by a score of 68-62. The remaining number one seeds both fell to two seeds, Kansas losing to Villanova and Oregon losing to Oklahoma. The Final Four games kick off on Saturday, April 2nd. Thank you, David. That's going to wrap it up for today's Anchor TV News broadcast. For Aaron Shea, Robbie Rhodes, and David Cusack, I'm Andrew Spaziano. Tune in next week for your new Anchor TV News broadcast.